Hi guys, we are here with Frank Bello from Anthrax, uh, some hours before their gig in Trezzadadda for the Italian show of Among the Living 30th Anniversary Tour in mm. order to talk about uh, one of the most important trash metal albums ever released Past and Future of Anthrax and every weird things in history of the metal jokers from the Big Apple Frank, first of all, thank you for this interview and for being here with us. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this anniversary for the, the 30 years of Among the Living. Af yeah. After three decades, what do you feel for this release that marked the history of metal and the lives of millions of metal heads? Well, you gotta think, after all this time, it's great to see people reacting to it. In a, think about it, if it's 30 years old, people get it. You'll see the show tonight. It's it's crazy. It's crazy. Like, it just came out. It really is that. Like, it's very fresh to them. And you also see a bunch of different people in the audience. You have a, a big crossover of fans. Now like, there. like Ramones. Like at the gig of Ramones. Exactly. You see The broker, the broker of Wall Street. Yes. And the punk and, and the metal. I, I metal love head. that. I love that. <laughs> and, you know, we have anywhere from 12 years old to 60 years old. Everybody's together now. There's a generation, new, new generation coming out. So for, to, for them to see that is really, they see this Among the Living thing, but it's, it's Among the Kings tour, we call, what we, we, we call it right now. And uh, so we do the Among the Living whole album, but then we do some other songs which people really like, from For All Kings, from our new record For All Kings. And uh, everybody is very, very satisfied today. at the end of the night. Everybody's hand is up in the air, which is all that matters to us. We're very happy about that. Frank, I yeah. I oh I um, I have to do to I have to, I have to, to do this uh, um, this question. Sure. Anthrax and the weird and incredible featuring a tradition that endures throughout the years in the late eighties with Public Enemy and now, please tell us the rumors concerning an album that could be realized with Lady Gaga. What's the truth <laughs> about this astonishing project? Lady Gaga is a friend of ours, right? Uh, she's amazing. We love her. But um, she just did the Grammys with Metallica. She's a metalhead, which I love. She's awesome. So uh, we would love to work with her. We put it out there. If she has, she's not a, she has a, doesn't have a lot of time. She's very busy, uh, obviously. So we want to see her do well, and she's metal, and we love her for it. Uh, but of course, we'd be very open to that. But nothing is planned right now. Okay. Um, make a, make a some uh, step back to the eighties. How was the mood in the band when you started to write down and record Among the Living? And what were the ex your expectations concerning a very unconventional album for that period, yeah. full of different background elements, especially in the vocal melodies? Well, the great thing is not knowing. Not knowing. All you know is there's a, there's a vibe. There's a vibe going out in the music scene, especially in the 80s. You've got to remember, it was us, Metallica, it was Slayer, Megadeth. And we knew there was a movement of metal, of heavy right in your face. And we were all Iron Maiden fans, Judas Priest fans, all that stuff. So we had this great community of metal uh, people coming up and fans. So we knew there was something special that was going on. And then when everybody came out with their records, it really broke over the top. So uh, Among the Living came out for us and it really, it, it, put, us, it really put us in a different uh, elevation. Irony has been always a peculiar mark of Anthrax works. Is a trait of all members of the band or there's, there is a specific comedian among you all? Comedy? Or well, levity. I, I, I think Anthrax, I think people see that. Uh, we don't really like to have a bad time. I mean, I'm, look, when I'm on stage, I have a good time. Um, I love what I do. Thank God. I'm very, I'm very happy that I can make, play music. There's some parts you want to get into and, 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 and rip it up. But for the most part, look, you got to look at it my way. I'm, I'm connecting with other fans. I'm a fan, connecting with other fans. I, I'm in a good mood, and I want to have a good time. I think people come to a metal show to get away from their problems. So you want to have a good time, right? And that's where you do that. That's where you're, you're allowed to do that. I think it's fun. Trash is back. In your opinion, the reborn of extreme metal genre par excellence so far, has, has it been a positive feature or is it only a trend wave because of the lack of creativity inside the metal scene? I don't think Thrash ever left. I, don't, I think it's always been here. For me it has, so I don't consider, you know, I understand what people say. You know, remember, music in general, everything in life, peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys. People, it, just because it's not as popular at one point in life doesn't mean it's not there. It just peaks and valleys. It, be, it becomes less popular. And then it becomes popular again. It cycles. Everything's in, the older you get, you see this. Everything comes in cycles. It's just the truth. That's how life is. I have another que question uh, concerning your lyrics. 
how much uh, have influenced you uh, Stephen King for yeah. your uh, for your lyrics not only for um, among the living I mean uh, f uh, for the lyrics of on of other tracks yeah. Well, Scott, Scott Ian writes our lyrics, and he, uh, it's a, he's a big Stephen King fan, so he's wrote, written some lyrics about that. But other things, Scott really writes about lyrics that affect him as a person, and, and of course he puts it towards us, and we, we agree to it, and, or we don't. And, um, and it usually is great, so we really don't have to worry about that. So it's really what, what Scott's reading about or something like that, and it always makes sense. It's got to make sense to the song, too, you know? In your opinion, Frank, the fact that uh, that the three uh, on five of Anthrax have an Italian background it could be the reason for your irony and mockery of your lyrics, especially this one about politics and society. For example, uh, a guy like Trap is a perfect target for your attacks. Do these years need a very rude and sarcastic metal intervention to wake up the people's minds in front of the world we live in? No, no, no. we're just musicians, and <laughs> not because we're Italian or anything like that. We're just people, like you, like you, we're just people, and I think, you know, if something's affecting us, maybe that'll come out like that. But the last thing I want to do as, as, a, as a musician or songwriter is preach to anybody. I think musicians should just be heard and, and through music, and I don't want to be preaching to anybody. Everybody has got their own opinion about everything, so you keep yours, I'll keep mine, and everybody's happy. Uh, what are the best memories fixed in your mind concerning the Among the Living period? Oof. A lot of touring. A lot of touring. You gotta remember when those days, especially breaking, you know, people say you're breaking, the record broke and it became big. You didn't stop touring. We were never home. We, all I can remember from then, we did the record, it came out, and all of a sudden, it just didn't. Every tour, we opened for a lot of. I mean, I remember we, I think we opened for so many bands. It, we, we, I just don't remember being home in 87, 88. It was just nonstop. Say hello to my family once in a while, and then we went back on tour. Uh, but it was a great time. The energy, the, the, it was electric. It was electric. Uh, but I tell you, and I, and I see that, and that's a great memory from then, but what I see now is a beautiful thing going on now. With, there's a new generation of fans along with their own fans, and this same, there's something like that energy. There's something that electric with this that that electricity that we had i think it's it's it feels like this with for all kings because people are really reacting to this when i see it I'm, it's all around the world what's going on so we've been touring this thing forever it's been out a little over a year we started touring before the record came out it's it's been non-stop there's the the, um, the still uh, there's still the idea of metal family mm -hmm. throughout the band. It could be uh, uh, still this this idea for the current scene of a metal family, the connection. Of course, that's the metal community is stronger than ever. I'm telling you, well, everybody wants them to say no, no, no. It's it's breaking. Look, it's not nothing's going away. This is metal's here, and it, it's bigger and it's becoming bigger than ever. Look. It's always been underground. You got to remember that. For me, for me, metal is underground. When I when I liked metal when, when I was younger, also, so it was underground. It wasn't it wasn't on the radio. It was never on the radio. I live in New York. It was you never heard Iron Maiden, Judas Priest on regular radio. It wasn't it wasn't there. It was always underground. There was always pop records, and there was the stuff that I liked. There was the, the other stuff. So it's the same. It's 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 a word of mouth kind of thing. I think it's very important that the community is still alive and, and great. Thank God for it. We love it. And do you see in the current music scene a combo that could follow your steps? Uh, the current music scene? Current yeah, music. Why not? Of course. Look, at the end of the day, you got to remember, in the 80s, nobody was teaching us how to do it. We saw Iron Maiden and Judas Priest. I just wanted to do that. So, but there's a lot of work involved. Everybody's in back of the van. Remember, we had the small vans. We got, I remember we had no money. We had to like load out the stuff out of the van, set up the you know all that stuff. Everybody's got to work to get to where you want to get to. Uh, hard work pays off. I hope. I I want to believe that. Uh, if you work hard, it, you get paid off for it. So you, you got to want it. It's got to be here. It's got to be in the gut. You know. So I um, I guess uh, that you are uh, best uh, very good memories concerning this tour. Yeah. So far. Oh, uh, this is. We're on the last three shows, which is, because this has been six weeks, and we, this, this last, we call it Finishing Strong, we're doing 10 shows in 11 days. Now, when you see the show later, it's not an easy show, <laughs> so you understand. 
So um, I, I, I think we're all looking forward to uh, going home and visit our families for a little bit. We have 10 days off, 10 days off, and then we go right back out for six weeks in America. So we, we're kind of, we, we need to recharge our batteries. With these last shows, we're going to finish strong. We're, we're excited. So, round of flag, have um, very, much, uh, very, uh, very much road to, to walk, mm -hmm. to walk on yeah. before retiring. There's no stopping us right now. <laughs> so, we are, we are hungrier now because of the success that we're seeing now. We're hungrier now than ever because I think we're in a good place in writing. The, the, the crowds are always packed. Every night on this tour has been packed. Great. Thank God, really. Uh, we've been very, very fortunate and we feel good and it is a great vibe for Anthrax right now. We're really happy. Lucky okay. too. Okay, Frank, you are uh, you were very kind. Thank, oh, thank you, you so much so for you. an interview you. and good luck for tonight. Thank you. We'll have a great show, we'll have fun. Turn it up a notch. Hey, I'm Frank Bello from Anthrax. Read Rock Rebel Magazine. <laughs>